Hello to therapists watching me and everybody. The question I'm asking is that, did you know that the effective treatment of Bell's palsy relies partly on your understanding about the root cause? The general challenge personally I have observed is that most of us do not know the specific muscles to target in Bell's palsy treatment. And of course, having a wrong understanding about the condition would definitely affect your treatment. But in this video, I have developed strategies to enlighten you about the specific muscles that are affected in Bell's palsy and the reason why. Alright, so thank you for staying with us. Before you understand the particular muscles that are affected when treating Bell's palsy, you need to know that the nerve that is involved in this situation is the seventh cranial nerve, which is the facial nerve. And we know that the facial nerve innervates some particular muscles of the face. And to help us understand these muscles, we need to understand the branches of this facial nerve. So when we take the branches of the facial nerve, we have the temporal branches and we have the zygomatic branches, we have the buccal branches, we have the marginal mandibular branches and the cervical branches. So before you understand the specific muscles in those palsy that become affected, you need to understand the branches of the facial nerve. All right, so after knowing the branches of the facial nerve, we would then need to know the particular muscles that are located in all these branches that become affected when there is a Bell's palsy. So we will then progress to look at these muscles. But before we come to the muscles, we need to look at the face. So on the face, there are certain areas that do not have muscles. And so you don't have to even try to focus those areas when you are doing your massage. So we have the roots of the nose where it's, it doesn't have any muscle that you need to focus and massage. We have the bridge, we have the dorsum nasi, we have the nasofacial angle, apex, name them. So all these areas, you don't have to lay much emphasis when you are doing your massage. Okay, so having known this, we then progress to look at some of the muscles that are located on each of the branches so that we appreciate the specific muscles that become affected in Bell's palsy. Okay, so we know the facial muscle. These are the facial muscles. See, so both sides of the face have these muscles. We have appreciated this. Okay, so this is one of the simplest way you can locate these muscles on your face. You can locate them simply by putting your, your hand this way to locate the areas or the branches of the facial nerve. So we have the temporal branch here, zygomatic, we have buccal, mandibular and cervical. So you can appreciate the areas where these muscles are located. Okay. Now we have the muscles. Come to the muscles. So with the temporal branch, we have the frontalis. We have the obicularis oculi. We have the okay, we have these two muscles that we are targeting when we are talking about Bell's palsy. These muscles are really affected. We have the zygomatic branch, we have obicularis oculi, zygomaticus major and minor, we have the levator labi superioris, and we have levator labi superioris aliquinasi. <laughs> That's an interesting name. Okay, then we come to the buca, the buca branch. We have the bisnata and the obicularis oris. So we come to the mandibula. So we have the dep depressor anguli oris, depressor labia inferioris, mentalis muscles, and when we come to the cervical branch, that we have the platysma. So these are some of the muscles that we need to lay much emphasis when we are dealing with Bell's palsy. So of course, it has become 
one of the key things that physiotherapists always recommend of which this protocol or this idea is surrounded by a lot of misconceptions or should i say controversies that is asking the patient to be chewing gum and one of the key reasons is because of the buccal branch of the facial nerve that becomes affected and so we do that alone to help revive the bisnata and the orbicularis oris all right so now let's go back to look at some of these muscles in a more zoomed form so that we can know the actual locations these muscles are located then we'll end our video okay so okay so this is the face and these are the muscles the facial muscles that have been listed plenty of them here so we have the frontalis here note that the frontalis are two so we have one around this area we have one around this area and one around here okay one around here one around here and we have the depressor supercilii but know that we are looking at muscles that are affected in Bell's palsy so the temporaris we have obicularis oculi zygomaticus major and minor we have we have bisnata also around this area okay we have the depressor anguli oris okay now let's go back okay so in this image you are seeing it more clearer you are seeing it more clearer let's look at it very well um we have the bisnata and the obicularis oris being located um okay so i hope you are appreciating it okay so we have the bisnata which is this muscle okay so if you encourage chewing that means you are going to revive this muscle and we have the orbicularis oris also around this area okay the orbicularis oris is located more enlarged here okay and we have the bisnata also here I hope you are appreciating that so basically this is the main reason why we look at the the branches of the facial nerve so that we can know the specific muscles that have been affected whenever we are dealing with Bell's palsy and so I hope that this video finds you well this time around we are going to incorporate protocols that will be very effective for your for your intervention. Thank you and have a nice day.